Okay, everyone, so we are back looking at our Google Fusion table, and um, we've gone ahead and we've copied over our HTML and JavaScript files. Um, we've downloaded our data here. Well, we put it in the same place where we downloaded our data to, but basically all we need to do at this point is we need to figure out how we're going to get this Google Fusion table data into our, um, into our application. So um, what we're going to use to do this is um, something called a version of something called simple query language. Um, and basically what simple query language is, it's a very uh, widely known and, and widely used um, database querying language. It's very, very simple, hence the simple. Or actually, I think it's structured. I always think it's simple, but actually it's structured, but it is simple. Um, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually, we are go it's going to allow us to pull back this data in a JSON format, right? Um, and so uh, we're going to start by looking at the documentation for this. So I'm going to say Google Fusion Tables um, SQL API. Um, and we'll take a check here. And, oh, okay, so that's an old link. Follow, follow our noses here. Um, and the thing that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to... Um, we want to be able to uh, pull data back. Um, and so I'm going to look for uh, uh, invoking the API for rows, which sounds better to me. Oh, and in fact, here we are. We have a nice example of what we can do. So I want to point out the pieces of this example. Um, what we have here is we have um, we have sort of the main URL. So again, this is an API. It's an API the same way that the FRED uh, database is an, H is an API. So we have the main part of the API, which is this, uh, this sort of the, the, the destination, the so-called endpoint sometimes. And then these are a series of, this is actually a single parameter. Um, so it's saying SQL, the query, uh, the SQL query is going to be, and a query is just a request, right? Like it's a search, basically. Um, select row ID from, okay, so this is a little bit complicated. Um, but basically we can see that it's looking for something and we have this from statement. And this gobbledygook here is actually the ID of a table. Um, and so let's go ahead and Look at this. Actually, oh, where's the nice example? They don't really have a good example here. We'll have to find another one. Um, but let's take a look at how this works, or what we get when we do this, if I can copy it correctly. Um, obviously, this is Google's example, so um, be pretty straightforward. Oops. Nope, doesn't like that. All right, let's see if we can find a better example. Hang on, everybody. Um, mm -mm. What I really want is... Let's see if we get using the API, if that's a little bit better. Ah, yes, this is better. Okay, so we come to the documentation. We're going to go using the API, and what we really want is we want to pull back data. And so I'm going to say querying for data. This looks more promising. Um, and this should give us an example. And if I look here, the answer is yes. I'm going to open this a new tab to see what I get. And what do you know? I get something that looks very much like JSON. And in fact, um, if we compare this to our data format that we need for Google visualizations, I'll just pull up the code playground right here. Um, I write in my browser. What do we notice once again about this? That it is an array of arrays, right? And what do we have here but an array of arrays? pretty interesting. And we might also notice that we have um, we have some metadata. We actually have an array at the beginning of our JSON that says what the names of the columns are, um, or what we surmise the columns are. Um, and so we are going to be able to use this in order to pull our data back um, from our own Google Fusion table in such a way that we can integrate it with the Google Visualizations API. So what are the pieces that we need to put in place for this to work? Well, we need to be able to construct one of these queries. Um, such that it targets our data. So the first step for us, we have, there's sort of two main things that we need to do. Um, the first thing is we need to create the query, um, and for that we need to know what the ID of our table is. So if I go into the file menu and I say about this table, what I will get is the ID of this table. Now, um, as you guys may remember from other parts of Google Docs, um, you often cannot publish data that isn't um, somehow accessible to the outside world. The, the default value of the privacy or should say the sharing settings, not the privacy, um, is 
is quote unquote private. And so it's very important that before I try to do anything with this, I make sure that the um, that the ownership of this or the visibility of this is that anyone with the link can view it. You can also make it public on the web. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, that will actually integrate it into Google search results. Um, but anyone with a link needs to be able to, at least anyone with a link needs to be able to view this in order for you to pull the data back. So once I've done that and I've got, I've copied the um, ID of my table, I'm going to just say, well, okay, um, here we go. So I'm going to say select star from, wait, why is this doing this? From, and I'm going to paste in the ID of my table. Okay, and then I get this, this weird, weird error. Um, so first of all, I just want to talk for a second about what, uh, what our, um, what our things in here are. So select. Select means pull back this information. Asterisk is our shorthand for everything. Um, and then we say from, this is actually very plain language, right? Select everything from, and then we give it the table ID. Um, but this doesn't seem to have turned out exactly how it was, as we would have hoped, um, because I'm seeing this daily limit for unauthenticated use exceeded, da, da 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 I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to follow the extended help link and see what I come up with. Um, some of you all might get this. So there's, there's two, th once again, there's two things for us to check here. Um, so I'm going to go under APIs. And first of all, I want to point out, this is a list of all of the APIs that are available to me on my Google account. There's uh, quite a few of them, as you can see. Um, very, very a lot of them. Um, and you want to make sure that if you don't have it already, that first of all, your Fusion Tables API is, is on. Um, and you'll find it, it'll, you know, it'll be alphabetically listed here if you haven't turned it on. So just make sure you go to off and click it to on. And then the second thing we need is credentials. Um, and you can always create a new key. So if you don't have a key at all, you can create a new key. But the point is basically that similar to the way that the Federal Reserve wants to give us an API key so that it knows who we are, um, and if we start doing bad things to it, it can cut us off, basically. Google is the same way. Um, for the most part, uh, it's unlikely that we're going to run up against their usage limits. Um, obviously, if you're a very large organization, you might, at which point you might need to consider an alternative solution. But for most of us, this is going to be um, you know, uh, perfectly viable. So we're going to now have to take this other gobbledygook string and add it as a final parameter to, and my browser history is betraying me here, um, to this thing. And what do we get back but a very nice looking set of JSON formatted data. So this is something that we can actually pull directly out of the browser. And that is one of the things that is actually super exciting about using Google Fusion Table. So we have two advantages here, which is that in a case like this, if I had a graphic that was that needed to cite the unemployment data, um, I can do an initial pull of the data from a place like Fred, and I can get the historical data um, into a table like this. And then subsequent to that, I'm really only adding one data point a month. Um, and the important thing here is that anybody uh, is capable of adding <laughs> of adding that data point, right? Because they're really just adding a row to a table. Um, for us, this is valuable because it means that you know someone else can take charge of updating the data, and we have a um, we have a live graphic on our website um, that's always up to date. Um, so, how do we actually integrate this into our application? Well, um, we are going to flip back to our JavaScript, and we are going to remember our GET request. Now, because what we're loading is JSON. Basically, we just need to say, hey, look, instead of that JSON, load this big URL, go to the same uh, resulting function, but of course, we're not going to treat it exactly the same way, right? We are not going to, um, we're not going to do exactly the same manipulations because the format of our JSON is different now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and comment, comment out all of my code here just so that I can console log my data and then think critically about how I want to actually deal with it. So I'm going to undo this console log um, and make sure basically that, that everything is still working, that I'm still actually getting my data to, to come out um, in my data loaded function. So here we go. I'm going to open this with Firefox. Okay, so we know of course that there isn't going to be a line chart below. Um, I will do my inspect element here and come to my console and I'm going to turn off everything except for uh, my JavaScript here. 
Oops, I guess I need that, right? And we see object, object, and we see columns is an array, and we see rows is an array. And rows is our array of arrays, which is great. That is exactly what we want. And we see this columns array. Um, this seems pretty positive, right? Because all we need to do now is translate that into the data format that we want. So recalling what we needed, I think what we want to say is, so my observation data before, well, we had to go through that this whole looping creation. And I don't think we need to do that anymore. So what I can do is probably just say, let's see what happens if I say my header array. If I say header array equals, what was the format here? Equals unemployment. Obviously, I could do this in the console log. I could do this in, um, I could do this in the browser, right? I could look back at my browser page and say, okay, this is going to be my columns array. So it's a property called columns. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to say header array equals unemp data dot columns. Right, and I'm going to do a console log on this just to make sure. Continue my commenting out. Let's see how we are. Oops, wrong one. Okay, that looks pretty positive. So what's the next step that I need to do? I need to, I already know that my data is in an array of arrays, so that's kind of nice because it means I don't have to worry about doing this whole um, conversion here. I don't have to deal with my for loop or anything like that. Um, as far as I can tell. Instead, I am simply going to say, oh, now wait a second. Now I have a bit of a problem because my data array as it currently exists, my data array as it currently exists doesn't have these headers on it. Um, now I could create a completely separate array, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the documentation. I'm going to see if there's another way for me to kind of construct my um, my array to data my data table element uh, such that I can make better use of the exact format that I have this in. Um, so so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to look for now. I want you guys to recognize that I'm sort of doing all this in real time, right? I'm I'm just looking for my documentation. I will bookmark these uh, for the next time. Um, but so what I want to do is um, let's see. I want to say Google. Google Visualizations API, here's the reference, so this looks positive. Um, and actually what we want to be doing, I think, is looking at the data tables, because we want to see what the different ways are to create data tables. We've already seen this thing of array from data, or data table to array, array to data table. Um, but there are probably other ways to do it. And in fact, uh, we start to see this right now. So we see that we can create a variable that is sort of an empty data table, and then we can use this add column where we get to say what type of, uh, what data type it's going to be, and what the column name should be, and then we can use add rows to construct that data table. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this straight out of this example, and I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Here we go. In fact, I may still leave my my header array uh, just for kicks, but. But instead of, so add rows is not going to be an explicit thing here, right? Instead, it's actually going to be, my data table is going to be, um, I'm going to add rows, is actually going to just be pointing to the rows from my JSON. So this is going to be rows. And then in this case, I can actually just say, okay, well, I know that the first thing is going to be um, a string and it's going to be called, I can, actually I can use this, I can use header array, right, and I'm going to say, look, it's going to be the first element of my header array, and this is going to be the second element of my header array, right, because zero was date and one was value. Um, then I add my rows, I'm just going to call this unemployment, and do I have to change anything else? I do want this to be a line chart. And I don't really have to change anything else because I already had it in the correct format. So I'm going to cross my fingers and see how I do here. And then we will come back and look at some more modifications depending on how this goes. Oh, 
I have a problem. Syntax error. Let's see if we can get in under the wire here. We've only got a couple of seconds. Line 36. Ah, forgot to uncomment my comment there. One more time. Fingers crossed and darn it. All right, we'll be back in one second.